Hi, this is Larry Greenblatt. Welcome back to my How to Pass the CISSP exam with the help of Mr. Spock and Captain Kirk. And today, episode four, Communication and Network Security. I have a special uh, question today on IPsec. And hopefully you've been through the other one, so you know my take on uh, the difference between subjective and objective or quantitative and qualitative thinking. Just remember that uh, in this example, Lieutenant Ohura who is playing a Vulcan harp. She is the subject, the harp is the object, and subjectively she will make different music at different times and different subjects will also do the same thing, different music. But the object remains the same no matter what subject plays it at any given time, it still has four knobs and 30 strings. So Spock is our quantitative thinker, Kirk is our qualitative thinker, and they are guiding us along in this series of questions, and as well as my entire uh, class. If you take my, my uh, live online or, or purchase my pre-recorded classes, you'll know I've been dealing with them for years. I've been teaching this class for almost 20 years, and uh, I like to say that rather than a devil and an angel on my shoulders, I always have Spock and Kirk. Now, I can be certain about very quantitative things. So if they ask me, how many bits in an MD5 hash? Well, that's a very uh, quantifiable question. There's 128 bits, I'm certain about that. Um, but usually when you take a test, it's hard to be that certain, especially in this test. We, we're more likely to be certain about wrong answers. I'm, I'm certain it's not this, but you'll be left with a couple of answers that you have to then determine, well, subjectively, what do I think is better? And that's where Captain Kirk comes in. He's, he's letting Spock to, to, to take the test first, and he's watching the clock, and uh, he's thinking about their money, and eventually he says, Spock, where are we on question 25? Captain, I'm certain it's not A and it's not B, and then Kirk has to subjectively pick an answer. Um, and I pointed out before that the ISO is like the Federation, if you're a Star Trek fan, uh, but you do need to know about the ISO for your test. And many people uh, misunderstand this and think it's an acronym for International Standards Organization, but actually it's a word. It comes from the Greek and it means equal. And the point is that no matter where you come from in this world, we need to treat each other like equals, especially when we share the internet. And so many of our internet standards come from the ISO. So this question or something very similar to this came up recently on a, uh, a site that I monitor uh, on Facebook for candidates studying for this test. Now, I changed the wording, I didn't want to plagiarize, but I, I believe I kept the same intent here. And all the respondents, I believe but me, got it wrong. Now I can see where subjectively maybe they were right, but I don't think so really be splitting hair. So uh, up until now, I've made it pretty, I've done the, the uh, other three episodes where, you know, it could have been very tough, very tricky to pick out the answer. But I think here I am 99.999% sure. Um, the question is on IPsec, and it's a field that I have a special interest in. I believe we need to do more IPsec. And I don't want to go down the rabbit's hole as to what happened, uh, but we've had problems over the years. And there's some conspiracy theories out there. I suggest you look at Van Hauser if you want to know more about IPv6 and what happened with IPsec. And uh, he's a great researcher, hacker. Uh, his actual, actual name is uh, Mark uh, Van Hess, a German researcher, brilliant, brilliant hacker, and wrote the uh, IPv6 attack tool set more than uh, 12 years ago. Uh, fantastic guy. But let's just say the scope as much as I can here. So Spock and Kirk sit down at the test, and Kirk notices Spock's taking a little bit of time on a question. He says, Spock, what's going on? I'm stuck on this question, Captain. Let me read it to you. In IPsec, if a required communications link is to support gateway to gateway or host to gateway, then only tunnel mode will, be, will work. B, only transport would be used. ESP is required for authentication. Both tunnel and transport could be used. I don't understand IPsec. Would you quickly explain to me what this means? Sure, Captain. Remember in encryption, we have symmetric, asymmetric, and hashing algorithms. Yeah, I, briefly, I kind of remember something about this. Yes, Mike. Well, with symmetric encryption, what most people think of, I can encrypt data. Crypt come from the Earth, ancient Greek, means to hide. But if you and I were the only two pe people with the keys to the filing cabinet, and you open up the uh, the the cabinet and see something in there that you didn't put in there, 
not only did we have a secret message, you also know that that message came from me. So with symmetric encryption, you're saying, Spock, we can have both confidentiality and authenticity. Correct, Captain. More modern uh, encryption technologies coming from the Earth's 1970s created hashing algorithms that allow us to check the integrity of something. Ah, I seem to recall this, that if we took a picture of the Enterprise before we left Alpha Centauri, and then a picture when we arrived back in the Earth, we could compare the pictures and see if something happened to the Enterprise. Correct, Captain. This is, we would take a hash file or something. All right, we got that. And then non-repudiation, because in a symmetric solution, you and I both share the keys to an outsider. If we tried to prove to Lieutenant Ohura who actually put the message in the filing cabinet, you could put something in there and blame me, Captain. So we created asymmetric encryption, which solves two problems. Well, one would be to validate the source of the hash, I guess, to make sure that it only came from one person. Correct. Using the private key of the sender, we can send a hash, and that would be to create a digital signature. Does IPsec do this? Negative, Captain. We don't need to do that because, never mind, Spock. Move on. Okay. Um, well, we do use asymmetric encryption to generate the symmetric keys, Captain, because one of the hard parts of symmetric encryption is I can't lock up the initial key to the cabinet. Uh-huh. So asymmetric encryption, which we can cover in more detail in another domain. Yes, Captain. But asymmetric encryption is actually used to share symmetric keys. And IPsec does do that. All right. But through encrypting hash, which we don't do here, we get non-repudiation. Yeah. All right. So that's the basic services of encryption. Move on, Spock. What is this IP part of it? Well, IP is the uh, internet protocol. It refers to how we transfer messages around the world. So if you recall, the Earth's U.S. Department of Defense had created the TCP IP model. And what it did was recalling that an application would create data, the data would have to be addressed if you're going to send it to another location. At the host to host layer, they would specify TCP or UDP port number, source and destination. But IPsec works at the internet layer or what the Federation calls, the ISO adopted TCP IP and called it the, uh, or the ISO, the ISO, the Federation and called it the Open System Interconnect Model. They modified it a little bit. We don't need to know much about it. We just wanna know that in this context, we are talking about applying encryption at layer three, or the network layer, at the IP layer. This was IP, came from here. Well, as far as IP is concerned, Captain, we have a payload and a header. Okay. Well, we could use the encryption just for authenticity, Captain. In which case, we could authenticate the source and destination IP addresses. That's called AH, or authentication header. Aha. Uh -huh. Makes sense, Mark. Yes, yes. Yes, but we could also use the encryption to protect the packet of data, the payload, and that's known as ESP. Ah, so I noticed in that question, it says something about ESP for authentication. Negative, Captain. ESP is used for confidentiality. Ah, okay, so there, it's not C. Correct, Captain. All right, move on, Spock. When you encrypt the data, Captain, if I'm encrypting the packet header, then routers in the middle could not read it. So when I create a secure transport from one machine to another, from one host to host, I cannot encrypt the packet header. Uh -huh. So a transport mode is data encryption only. Correct, Captain. But if I did the encryption at a perimeter endpoint, and I say it started it at the gateway, keep it all clear text here, and then decrypt it here. This gateway could take this machine's original packet and encapsulate it, put a new packet header on top of it, creating a tunnel. Aha, uh -huh. so you're saying with a tunnel mode, I can do data and header encryption. Correct, Captain. Would I ever do a tunnel from a host to another host? Hmm, I've never seen that, Captain. But what I have seen is that you do a 
tunnel from a workstation and terminate it at a gateway. So this workstation could see all the machines inside this. I kind of get what you're going with that, Spock. Explain a little more. Well, what I'm saying, Captain, is if I have a tunnel configured here to here, then I would have a site-to-site -site VPN. Site-to-site -site is tunnel. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And what about the, for this workstation to get there? Well, this workstation, if this workstation down here wants to communicate to everybody on this network, or everybody on this network, he could terminate it at the gateway. So I could also have host to gateway or host remote access. Could also equal tunnel. Uh-huh, makes sense, Spock. But if I'm going strictly host to host, and I'm going from say, this machine, all the way to this machine, in which case you would have a transport. Uh -huh. So host to host equals transport. Correct, Captain. All right. Well, I think I've got it, Spock. Uh, so using encryption, we could have private communications and we can also authenticate it. Well, remember, we're also hashing it, Captain. So we get mutual network authentication. We know that who we're talking to by the source and destination IP addresses. We know who the source and destination communications endpoints are. Oh, I see. We also get integrity. We get something called replay protection. Does that have to do with this question, Spock? Negative. Move on. We get confidentiality. And okay, I can answer this. Transport mode says payload is confidential protection only. But in tunnel, I can protect the header and that allows to authenticate the header. And it also gives me payload encryption. Correct. Can I do AH with transport? Well, you can, Captain. The only problem is that if the IP addresses change in a network address translation point, it will not work. Aha, uh -huh. so AH is not really popular in transport. Actually, Captain, I've never seen AH mode configured in production. I've never even seen a transport mode ever configured, Captain. Only back at the academy in the lab did we ever do that. Hmm. Interesting spot. But let's move on. Aren't there Federation standards that tell us exactly how this should be configured? In the Engineering Task Force, 2401 is the standard that introduced IPsec. A transport mode security association is a security association between two hosts. Whenever either end of a security association is a security gateway, the SA must be tunneled. Spock, then why did you say this was subjective? Why couldn't you answer this question yourself? Well, there's an interesting configuration and example, Captain, that I have done for both Lieutenant O'Hara and Scotty, where we created a transport mode VPN, but we terminated it at a gateway. Well, why would you do that? So we go to remotely administer the gateway. Well, in that case, wouldn't the host actually be, wouldn't the gateway be a host in that environment? Well, relatively speaking, yes. In that case, the gateway is being treated as a host. Well, then I'm sorry, Spock. The answer truly must be A. Let's go back to that question. Yes, Captain. In IPsec, if a required communication link is to support gateway to gateway or host to gateway, then the answer's gotta be A, Spock. Only tunnel mode will work. As you showed me from the RFC, whenever either end of a security association is a security gateway, the SA must be tunnel mode. But Captain, remember the, no Spock, we need to move on. And that's how it is. So in that question, in the uh, Facebook example that everybody picked D, but me. And I, the only way I could argue their answer is if they were doing as they had in this example from Cisco, where you created a transport to a gateway so you could remotely administer the gateway. But in that case, the gateway is being treated as a host. I have to believe that this question is not going that far. If I asked you to bring me a picture of a dog tied to a fence, you could think that I meant take a picture of a dog and tie that picture to a fence. 
but semantically that could not possibly really be what I meant. What I meant was you to tie a, take a dog to a fence and take a picture of it. So I am 99.999% certain that A is the answer. Now, IPsec allows for communication protection with encryption at the packet level. There are various ways or modes. We have ESP, where it protects the payload. We have AH, that authenticates the header. Either of these could be tunnel or transport. And the truth is, like Spock, I've never seen a production VPN, IPsec configuration, that was not ESP tunnel. Now, I know why AH didn't get real popular. It was because of uh, NAT breaking. Um, but why didn't transport mode grow? In fact, in IPsec, IPv6, it was supposed to be a requirement that I would authenticate everybody. You didn't have to encrypt the data just so I knew who the other machines on my, my network were. And it was a requirement, and they changed that in 2012 and removed that requirement. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, there are some conspiracy theories that the NSA broke it. You can look that up. Um, again, if you really want to know more about IPv6 and IPv6, IPsec, I highly recommend you take a look at some of the works by Mark Van Hess, also known as Van Hauser. All right, I hope that helped people. Uh, I thank you very much. May you all live long and prosper. And if you'd like to know more, I do teach this class live online. I've been doing this again for a better part of two decades. And I also sell pre-recorded versions of the class. My 2018 been out there uh, it's for the last week and a, or month. And uh, I also now sell a practice exam and then give a half day one-on-one -on -one review for people who need it. And I've only started this last week. I had three people, two people tested, passed, and said that that was actually uh, the thing they think really put them over the edge. All right, and to see my schedule, uh, please just go to internetworkdefense.com. Thank you again, and may you all live long and prosper. <laughs>